Hey YouTube, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life and I've been doing a lot of uh, updates in the shop lately and not a lot but the ones that have made a big difference and I just want to share them with you. Also a lot of them have come from suggestions from you guys and I really appreciate that. I put them into effect and super glad for your input. I, I really thank you sincerely for that. So real quickly, not everything's a big uh, upgrade but uh, all these storage bins that I had on my workbench uh, I've just moved them over to here and as you can tell this is a multi-functional uh, building the seat container that we have like there's my daughter's competitive dance bag my son's goalie hockey bag my other son's hockey bag goalie pads cowboy boots veterinary supplies bows hockey sticks this area has to serve a lot of different purposes even canned goods and stuff some household things kleenex all get stored in here but slowly, uh, knife making is taking over, so that's good. So all this stuff was on my workbench, as well as these wooden ones, and I got rid of them, moved them, relocated them, so that I could put up a pegboard just for dedicated knife tools. Um, you know, I got really easy access for my clamp storage. That's just a piece of angle iron uh, that I drilled two holes and I screwed it up in there. Um, you know, the hammers I use often, the crescent wrench I use regularly, measuring stuff, files, a place to hang some um, knives that are in progress, my file card. You know, these aren't all my screwdrivers by any means, but these are the ones I use all the time. And that's what this area is, just I don't want to crowd it with tools. You know, before when I've done pegboard in my garage, I would have like every single wrench all laid out and stuff but I don't want that for this because I don't use all those things and all I want is that this area is the most efficient knife making area uh, that I could make it be so that's why I don't have everything on here and some of the things I have on this pegboard might be a little odd to just you know if it were just like an everyday handyman board uh, this is kind of my tool selection that's very very specific for making knives so things like my deburring tool I've got this weird little clamp um, uh, this little handheld countersink, my files, my file card. Not a lot of stuff, I don't want it too crowded. Everything that I use to make knives to be right here. Like I go through so much masking tape when I'm making a knife. Boom, three rolls of it right here, sanding stuff. And then this is also uh, like my main knife making bench. So I moved my oven, it was up here, moved it down there so I could make room for that. Uh, my Allen keys, I actually use them a lot for making knives for different screw on handles and things like that and adjusting things. So uh, those actually are worth being out uh, for my application. And then again, I've got all my different uh, sandpaper assortments. I need a few more, I think. These ones are unlabeled. Uh, this is 2000 grit. Uh, different sanding blocks that I have are all right here. Some towels. Uh, this is a handy one. Just, just a piece of 3 8 G10 with a uh, leather glued onto it. And then also with my 10 inch uh, contact wheel I cut a 10 inch radius on a piece of solid maple and uh, used uh, super 77 adhesive to spray on some leather so now when I'm hand polishing my hollow grinds I can just use this little block works really well dowels and stuff like that keep this stuff kind of out of the way but easy access and then I've got you know my kydex rivet press and stuff my heat treat thing uh, different g10 storage handle storage yada yada some my milling tools, machine tools, and I'm trying to figure out the best place for knives in progress. Right now, I keep everything in this wrapped in uh, all my knives in that little container, but I would like something a little bit more open. And then all finished blades that are complete and ready to go out are up there. Um, so that to me is a pretty, pretty big uh, update. I'm really happy with, with this and how clean it's become and it's not cluttered. I also gained a lot of workbench and then also I had that red vise mounted here only for like a week probably and uh, with this garage sale score and all the tips you guys gave me I've got it all set up so I don't know if this was an antique. Uh, I'm, I mean it is. It's not. It's old but I don't know if it's actually worth saving as an antique. To me it has far more value using it. Also it's going to stay in good condition if I use it and it's not going to rust and I'll keep after it and I polished it up a little bit. I didn't I didn't go crazy on it and I would never owned one of these. I've never known anybody that's owned one of these so I didn't know that you normally mount plywood to the inside here. The only stuff I had here was this uh, 3 8 plywood and it's not even that nice. It's just pretty crappy but I just wanted to give a test stupid bug look at that flying biting ant not anymore i had this stuff kicking around and i thought well it's better than nothing 
I uh, cleaned all this up, mounted the, the plywood here, and I'm pretty happy with this thing. If we look here, it opens up to 12 inches, which is pretty good. Quick release works well. This thing slides really well, and then the threads engage really well. And it actually works like a just a champ. Also, um, a gentleman, oh shoot, I don't have my computer in front of me. I'm going to put his name on the screen because it, I want to give credit to this guy. He had a great idea and I'm glad he shared it with me. He said what he does is simply mounts his other vices. Uh, so this was the vice that I had uh, mounted up on the table. And he suggested, oh, just mount it to a 4x4. And so I did that. I kind of did a... a 2x6 and then that mounted and glued to a 4x4 so I can just rest it in the clamp, clamp it down here and now should I need uh, this style of a bench vise for any task I can quickly put it on here uh, but I have this nice flat surface and I don't lose this area of the bench to a vise. Uh, another comment I had was about this shop vise of mine. Um, this isn't a really high-end one but it had some of the features I wanted and the price was really good. It's like 70 bucks I think. Um, Guy had mentioned, I forget his name, but that I had this mounted way too far in. And uh, for most applications, absolutely, I agree. The reason I have this mounted so far in is because I don't ever need clearance to the ground. I'm, I built, the, I put this here for knives. Uh, also, you see I have it quite in this way, and that's why I have clearance to my milling machine. Uh, I swung this thing around, figure out where I needed it to go. And uh, uh, this gives my milling machine full uh, movement and this axis and I, this thing isn't going to be in the way. Um, also, I use this for clamping knives and working on knives at this height, so I don't need to have clearance. You know, obviously I couldn't clamp something and, you know, like a 10-foot piece of material and have clearance to the floor. I don't need that. Even if I didn't need it, I had more room, I would mount this out farther, but as you can see from here to there, this is my belt grinder table. I would say I've got, well, really, it's a very narrow passageway, and even, uh, you know, bringing this out two inches here uh, would narrow that up. I wanted to keep that as wide as possible, but I still wanted the vise in that location, so that's the reason I have this bench vise mounted so far into the table. Uh, not the proper way to do it if you're setting up a normal shop, I agree, but I'm in a C container, and I'm limited uh, with how much width I have. And it's actually quite a narrow passageway, especially I'm going through there a lot to my toolbox and my belt grinders. And so I don't want to be cranking my hips on my bench vise or on this table for my homemade belt grinder. So that's the reason that's set up that way. Uh, coming over to the belt grinders, um, I put up a little pegboard there for even something like this is just my beveling jig. Uh, this is another permanent beveling jig that uh, a certain angle, I forget what I set this at angle that I really like using so I just machined, I just put this in the milling machine uh, I just put this in the milling machine and I milled a very specific angle there so it's like a permanent beveling jig but just to get that stuff, I used to just keep that stuff all right here to get it off of there is so nice uh, hanging up there, my vice grip for clamping my knives and then also all my different grits for my spindle sander uh, this and all of them, these are just the ones I use the most it's nice to have them readily accessible but out of the way so on this little piece of tool steel this whole grinding bench is is completely free and clear of stuff which is really nice uh, I also used to have to set this uh, the work surface for my KMG belt grinder and I just put in two bolts like that uh, bolt them through this plywood this plywood is just a dust protector from uh, like this shelving unit and so that keeps that hanging there and out of the way as well as the 916 syringe that I always need to loosen and tighten my tool rest uh, why not hang it there um, it's out of the way there's nothing in the way and then when I'm ready to grind I can just bring my water out set it underneath here and I'm good to go uh, another thing that I should have done a long time ago never did was uh, light uh, everything here is done fairly podunk like this is not by any means the right way to do it but this is also not a permanent setup. I've got a very large shop building sitting out there that I just need permits to get put up and then I'm going to do that. Um, but I uh, added this little light here um, just so I can see. Uh, a lot of times when you're grinding your bevels, you got, you're working with such tight tolerances. Uh, it's kind of nice to have this uh, really bright light where you want it. The one thing I don't like is this is actually an LED bulb, but it's got a very yellow, orangey uh, color to it, like an incandescent bulb. I by far prefer uh, the color of these ones, a little more natural, uh, whatever the color temperature is, but that's pretty much the big updates in the uh, knife shop. 
Oh, I also went through and I organized all my drill bits. So just really high end, like these are all dormer and above uh, sorted size bits. This is just like my go-to kit. These things were overflowing and I probably threw out, I would say 150 drill bits yesterday. All these ones are good bits. So I've got small size bits, large size bits, and then my letters, my metric, my number index, and also, uh, this was just cute. I think this is such a cute little kit, and uh, it's all got high-end uh, dormer in it now. So I had this empty, I found this, I forget where, it's like a garage sale, nah, I don't know. I got this, and it was all empty when I got it, and now it's finally got some decent drill bits in it. And then I cleaned out, this was an unopenable drawer with drill bits, but I finally cleaned it up, and I got it all organized, um, you know, things like big hole saws, and I've got boxes of hole saws, and there's hole saws, and but they were just piled in here, and you couldn't put anything in here, so I spent a little time organizing it. Um, this is a drill kit that's got, like, everything in it. Not quality stuff, but if I ever need a bit, and I don't have it in a high-quality one, chance I have it in here. And then just randoms. Like, these are all good drill bits, but I don't need them all out, so... This is all like pretty much brand new or really high end like dormer SKF bits that I'm just leaving here and I can replenish the stock of those ones when they break. So that is pretty much uh, what went on here yesterday. It took the best part of a day to get all this done. Um, but just building here now at this work area is gonna be so much more efficient. So I was always going back and forth to my toolbox right like just grabbing this file grabbing that file grabbing the screwdriver grabbing my file card and I just kind of thought you know what I might as well get this set up all this storage stuff that was up here before is kind of useless I mean it's all good stuff I access this stuff on a regular basis but why have that sitting on a workbench and run to your tools over there it just didn't make sense to me so we went ahead and we put our toolbox there Made a nice little pegboard here, and we are getting set up for knife making. So, pretty stoked about that, and um, I have a couple other videos um, I, I shot today. One is for GMD, I believe, is a the YouTube uh, viewer who wanted to know about my about the even heat knife kiln. I have that done, and then also I did one, a uh, gentleman, Bert, from Two Hills, Alberta, asked about the uh, speed, and the belt speed, and actually tacked my bell grinder. Uh, I thought it was running at 3600 RPM, but it's actually like 3362, I believe is what it came out to. But kind of cool to have. I'm looking to get a VFT and a better motor for that belt grinder. I'm actually trying to find one right now that's reasonably priced. And uh, if that's the case, uh, I'll be upgrading that quite shortly here. And then also getting those small uh, contact wheels. The reason I would like a VFT is so that I can use those small uh, grinding wheels that allow you to do the real fine contours and maybe eventually get rid of uh, my oscillating spindle sander for the reason that these uh, drums that you get, it's very hard to find different grits and they're actually quite expensive. I believe it's a lot cheaper to, if I had, uh, it'd be a lot cheaper to do all my work on a belt grinder and then also uh, you can get any type of belt or grit or anything you want for the belt grinder. I'm not limited uh, to what I can happen to find in my local store or you can order this stuff, but they're really expensive. I think it's cheaper to do all that work on a belt grinder. So, but then running at the surface speed from that I'm running uh, with that small little wheel, your bearings would spin way too fast and you'd overheat it. So you need to either have a uh, some type of a transmission system where you can control your your speeds. And I think a VFD is probably the best way to go. Uh, you could do step pulleys, but I want a VFD. If you have any questions about anything here, uh, how I've got stuff set up, or uh, more tips too, especially guys, like I said, I'm going to put the, the description or, or put right here on the screen the gentleman that told me about uh, a few tips on the bench vise, and I really do appreciate that. Uh, totally put them into practice, cleaned everything up, uh, put the plywood on. I wouldn't have done that actually. I probably would never have thought about that if it weren't for you guys having telling me. Um, maybe I would have noticed in a, a pictures online or something like that, but I sure appreciate your help for that. Thanks for watching. Hope you all have a great day. Cheers.